2021 is the 20th year of Lego Harry Potter and during that time we have gotten some extremely detailed and amazing and practically spot on minifigures and then there's these 12. Now while I really like all 12 of these figures there are just a few things that I feel like could have been done in order to improve them and fix them per se and a lot of this can be done using pre-existing parts if you want to customize them some of which I'm looking at you Lockhart in the lavender robes aren't actually possible and all will be done using a little bit of photoshop. So today I'm going to have a look at all 12 of these figures which I feel like just aren't the prime and best versions of themselves that they can be so let's go ahead and fix them. First up we have the traitor and Lord Voldemort's accomplice slash servant Mr. Peter Pettigrew himself from the Rise of Voldemort set and while this figure is really nice has some really great printing I personally feel like the hair could have been a bit better I really personally never saw Peter Pettigrew as a ginger I don't know about anyone else I always saw him sort of having a more of a medium nougat in Lego terms hairpiece which is exactly what I'm gonna do today Today, I also feel like it could be just a tiny bit more rats like so for this figure it's pretty simple I'm just gonna pluck the hair off the wrestling champion minifigure from the series 15 and just swap it out real simple and easy and unfortunately the eyebrows don't quite match but I really think that just this hairstyle in general is a much better fit and even color wise I think this is just so much more accurate to the film like no matter what movie you're looking at whether that be Prisoner of Azkaban or Goblet of Fire itself. I really feel like this hair just stands out so much better. Next up we have Young Luna Lovegood from the 2021 Chamber of Secrets set and while this figure doesn't exactly require fixing considering she doesn't even exist since her first introduction was in the Order of the Phoenix itself, the annoying part about Luna is that she literally looks like every other child minifigure whether that be Seamus Finnegan or Justin Finch Fletchley or Ginny Weasley herself, she just seems to look like everyone else and that is my sort of big problem with her. Now for this figure again it's pretty easy all you need is the Gabrielle Delaclaw figure from the Bobatons carriage a couple of years ago as we will be stealing her face and sticking it on Luna and yes I know these faces look very similar but the big advantage to Gabrielle is that she has blonde eyebrows and freckles which I feel like it just suits Luna so much better considering right now Luna's eyebrows are pitch black and there is our updated Luna. Now in the grand scheme of things, does this really change this figure all that much? No, not really, besides the fact that Luna can now actually go to sleep in class. So instead of looking sad, she can now either, you know, focus on a spell or she could be passed out in potions class. It's up to you, really. Now, speaking of the Della Claus, we have Fleur herself, which this one I feel like just should have been a given anyway. And that is to make Fleur's face not this one and actually use the face from once again the Bobaton's carriage which considering otherwise this has really only been used for Phoebe from Friends I feel like it just works so much better especially considering the face we currently have on for the rest of the floor figures is actually the same as Hannah Abbott's and while she's sort of a background character let's just 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 give Flo her own unique face. I mean, this figure is just miles above any of the other figures. Boom, how easy was that? See, look, now she looks kind and caring and friendly. Honestly, just, just go and buy yourself another three of these heads. They're pretty common these days. It's a very easy, very simple fix. And at least now as well, all of your Fleur minifigures look exactly the same. Next up is Professor Lockhart, and this figure looks great. He's practically perfect, almost at least, in every single way. But my main complaint with this guy has always been the fact that he doesn't have a cape. Knock it! If you look at the one from Diagon Alley and you know he's got a cape and he looks great. We also don't have any coattails printing on the legs you know since you know why would they ever reprint legs with a, a print that already exists since we have to recolor it. That's stupid. So instead what you should go and do is head over to our good friends over at Lego Ninjago and just steal the cape from this year's sets. Now while the color doesn't technically match exactly 
exactly. At least this guy's got a cape and it matches close enough and even to some degree I feel like the fact that the cape is a slightly different colour really benefits him here. The only kind of downside is the fact that it's one of the soft, spongy, kind of superhero-y capes rather than the sort of more nice and firm and cardboardy sort of capes that he's got from Diagon Alley. But just here, this just makes such a big improvement and the cape also matches his little necktie or ascot, whatever you want to call it. Just this, this figure looks so much better now that he's actually got a cape and some robes to sort of resemble. I just, I really think that this was a giant step up and I don't know why it wasn't included considering this cape literally already exists. So speaking of Lockhart, this figure again just looks really nice, really good. The fact that he has a cape is a really big win for me, let alone the fact that it's dual toned. It looks gorgeous. He looks great. It's just I personally, in my opinion, feel like the robe color doesn't quite match. I feel like lavender just is not the closest color in order to sort of get him from his first Diagon Alley appearance. Now, to me, and to be completely honest, I feel like the perfect color for this doesn't actually exist within Lego's palette, and there is no way that they are going to create a special sort of custom color for Lockhart. It's just, it's not going to happen. So for me personally, I feel like the best thing to sort of fix this figure is actually just swap out the color of the robes. So unfortunately, because this Lego color doesn't exist, let alone any other pieces, with a bit, little bit of quick Photoshop, you could sort of see what I mean here with the colors looking a bit better. I tried to make this as close to an actual Lego blue as possible. Here's how Lockhart would look compared to his, you know, actual version versus his newer version. And yeah, I just, again, I really wish there was some sort of in-between color, but it's sort of unreasonable. So in the grand scheme of things, I think this figure does look pretty good as is. Next up is Madame Maxine. That's one big woman. And she's so tall I had to slightly adjust my tripod. And again, like Lockhart, I think this figure is really well done. I love how they made her taller using one of these giant sloping bricks. I think it works really well. The fact that it's got dual printing on either side, the front and the slope itself is amazing. I mean, I feel like the only real thing to make this figure even better is give her some arm printing. And of course, this little bird's nest accessory. Considering the printing is literally on her neck, it's it's really not that hard just to take her head off and add your little bird's nest on and just make this figure that much better. Now, admittedly, this idea wasn't my own. I actually saw it on Instagram and if I can find the person who I kind of stole this idea, from. I will just insert their name right here because this looks amazing. It does sort of pop up her hair just a tiny bit. It doesn't quite sit on her head properly, but it definitely looks a lot better. And while you're here as well, you might as well swap out both Madame Maxine's hairs to the dark brown. It just looks a lot more accurate than the black did. So there you go. Oh look, it's Madame Rose Murta. Did you guys know that uh, Ron actually fancies her? But you know what? He would probably fancy see her a bit more as kind of creepy as that is if she actually had a skirt instead of the legs that she has. Now again, we all know Lego's a bit stingy here and there when it comes to giving out leg printing, so it's completely understandable for such a sort of side and minimal character that we wouldn't give her an original face or leg printing. I mean, isn't the recoloring of the hair enough, you say? Well, no, because actually I feel like this could have been a skirt piece, and once again, how convenient the skirt piece in this color actually exists. So in order to fix Madame Rose Murta, you just cut off her legs and stick her on this little dress piece and voila, she looks a bit more accurate. Now admittedly, her dress doesn't actually go to the floor, it's not really a floor length gown, but personally I just think it's a lot more accurate than the legs considering there is more dress to leg in terms of like a ratio. This is a bit more accurate and I'm pretty sure actually I got this piece from Build a Minifigure so it's pretty accessible. Oh dear, alright, here we go. Up next is Tom Riddle from the Chamber of Secrets set. Now, for me personally, I think the version out of the book was just a lot more accurate. I do prefer this face, admittedly, and the torso print is really, really nice. I love the fact that we actually have the little Hogwarts crest there, but these legs are atrocious because just look how nice everything looks from the front, and then you rotate the figure and you realize his legs are gray and they're not dual molded gray, they're just printed grain, it sort of ruins everything for you. Now I know that with this figure in particular, a lot of his robes 
are in fact great. This is a flashback scene. He's a Horcrux. Spoilers, by the way. Um, but a lot of his robes are gray. But to me, I feel like this just looks so wrong. I don't know if gray printed on black would have solved anything but for me personally I feel like the good old coattails piece is going to look so much more accurate and so much better with this one. Now specifically I feel like you need to use the new coattails piece from Draco from the Astronomy Tower. Personally I pinched these ones off Lucius Malfoy from Diagon Alley and that way you can just sort of rip off Tom Riddle's legs. I mean you could just leave it at that and then the Dark Lord dies super early and ruins the rest of the franchise or you can stick the new legs on and voila! And that's how you fix the Chamber of Secrets version. Or another version is just to go and buy the Harry Potter Visual Dictionary. And personally, I think that's an even better fix because then the printing continues on from the torso to the legs and just looks even better. So if you really want a big step up, just get the other figure instead. Now it's time for a bonus figure, and that is Professor Snape, because admittedly I forgot that I was actually going to include him in this. Now Professor Snape, specifically the one from the book version, there's a lot of upgrades to be made. First and foremost, the easiest way is just to grab the ones from the 2018 set with the coattails printing instantly so much better, but I'm not just gonna stop there because of course, just like the last video where we fixed Bellatrix and Molly, if you just go back a couple of years and grab some great figures, you're going to be able to improve Professor Snape just quite a bit more. But the hardest one for a lot of people to get a hold of is going to be the 2007 Snape, which is very, very, very expensive, but has the absolute best Professor Snape face I have ever seen. Just look at that bad boy. He just looks... Mwah. Chef's kiss, beautiful, well done Snape, you look great. So by doing a little bit of mix and matching, we're gonna take the cape off the 2010 Professor Snape, which you really can take this black cape from anywhere. I just prefer the fabric to the one from the 2007 one. And then we're gonna take the head off the 2007 one and just mush them all together on our 2020 version. And there you have it, the perfect version, I think at least, of Professor Snape. I mean, another way you could do this is just by taking off the cape and putting this head and hair on top of the 2018 version. But considering Snape is always sort of just grand entrancing his way through the walls and corridors of Hogwarts with his giant cloak, I really feel like the cape is a big, big, big benefit here. Now, like I said, this head is quite, quite expensive to get a hold of. It's not quite the easiest thing ever, so it's quite unfortunate, but you do have to admit that this face just looks almost exactly like Alan Rickman, and even though you do have to sacrifice an alternate face, I really don't think it matters all that much, because like I said, this just looks exactly like Alan Rickman and really when you think about it how many facial expressions did Snape have during the entire movie franchise really not that many Next up is a returning member, and that is Luna Lovegood. And this version of Luna is a very, very simple fix, and one probably not many people are aware of. And that is purely down to Luna's leg size. She actually, according to the sort of height chart, as you'll see here, should have mid legs, because in the Order of the Phoenix, Luna was actually in year four, the same as Ginny, so she shouldn't have some regular size legs. So all you need to do is grab yourself a pair of mid black legs which these days are pretty accessible and take off her regular sized ones and just plop them along there and now she is a lot more sort of height and house accurate it's such a minor fix that I know so many people will not care but it's just a tiny little attention to detail that I feel like just make my collection just look even better so I mean at least for me personally I'm going to leave Luna with mid legs from now on and again with CMF Luna same same but different it's her leg size now of course in the Half-Blood Prince she's moved up a year group so now she should actually have regular size legs instead of mid legs but I'll give it to the CMF they hadn't quite figured out the leg sizes yet things were all kind of all over the place the theme was only just restarting so I'll give them a pass with this one it also introduced blue mid legs for us which was great but now it's time to get rid of them 
So again, such a minor, tiny, weeny detail that I feel like just a lot of people won't care about. I mean, at least this one, now all of your figures technically match height-wise when you sort of put them side by side. But I guess overall, congratulations, Luna. You had a growth spurt over the summer. But the height issues don't stop there because next up we have Neville Lunge Button. Now, just like Luna, this was the original CMF. We hadn't quite sorted out the leg situation. So we got some plain black legs, which in all honesty was very, very helpful and I would not change a thing about how this figure released but now that the figure's out it's time that I actually swap him and make him a lot more accurate especially considering they sort of fixed this problem with the Hufflepuff Herbology books so it's time to take off his legs and make him fit the rest of the students in that year group and give him some tiny weeny short legs he's he shrunk I'm sorry Neville I have really had to take off your height and last but not least we have Vincent Crab although you probably wouldn't recognize that this is Vincent Crab because because of his horrible hairpiece that was used. I personally just feel like this hair does not suit Crab at all. I mean, look, it's overused as is, but at least in most cases, it works quite well, but just Crab, it, it, it doesn't at all. And I, I really feel like it could have been a lot better, which is exactly why I purposefully went out of my way to buy a dark brown sort of curled piece of sort of the fin slash falcon hair so that I could take off the little good old Mutt Williams and just swap this out and make him look a bit more accurate to literally every single movie adaptation and appearance that he's been in. It just looks so much like Crab as you see him in the movies. Is it just me or am I being dramatic? Because if I'm being dramatic, please tell me because I think this is miles, miles better. So there are the 12 Harry Potter figures that I personally feel like needed the detail and accuracy that they deserve. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already as well, check out the first video I did in this sort of fixing the figures series where we fixed Bellatrix and Molly Weasley and Lucius Malfoy and a couple of other really prominent characters. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already as well, consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you later.